It's a pleasure and an honor for me to be here this morning. Uh, it's uh, really an honor simply because there are so many wonderful, wonderful preachers and teachers in this church. Amen. It's such a conglomerate of preachers and teachers in this church. And Pastor Howard asked me to come here and speak in his absence. And Sister Martha sent me a uh, text from Florida with a picture that says it was so peaceful and she asked me, she said that this wasn't her home and was Geraldine still in Michigan and was Michigan her home? <laughs> <laughs> Geraldine told her a long time ago that Florida was her home, but I, I, I said, this is my home. Uh, I just want to stand here and look at the congregation. I see my brother. I just want to drink in the congregation. Sometimes I come here and I, preach and you start to talk and you <laughs> fail to really look at people and just like take a drink. I want to take a moment to just look at you. <laughs> and I don't do it often because I got a feeling that it may be a while before I do it again. I got a funny feeling. <laughs> Pastor Howard in his absence, sometimes he chooses one of us. I'm glad he told me this time. Uh, I just appreciate it. And I just want to drink in the crowd and drink in the... I see we got an overflow. We got we got the standing room on here. We got the line going all the way up to the street. We got a crowd here today. We got a crowd here today, praise the Lord. But I believe in one thing, that people are what they're supposed to be when they're there. No matter how it happens. And I pray to God that no words in the day. First, let me start off by saying uh, one Sunday morning, a mother went in to wake her son to church. He said he didn't want to go to church. He said he didn't want to go to church. She said, why not? She said, There's two reasons. One, they don't like me in the church. Two, I don't like them. <laughs> she told us, she said, well, I got two reasons you should go. One, you're 55 years old. And two, you're the pastor. <laughs> 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 One time there was a man, a little boy named Bobby, he uh, arrived at the football game kind of late. And his friends asked him, well, Bobby, why are you so late? He said, well, I had decided to go to, to go to, I had to decide to go to the football game and go to church. So his friend said, that shouldn't take too long. He said, yeah, but I tossed the coin. He said, and he said, I tossed the coin. His friend said, that shouldn't take too long. He said, yeah, but I had to toss it 35 times. <laughs> <laughs> Father, who is my source, the Son, who is my Savior, and the Holy Spirit, who is my sustainer. To all the clergy that are in the house, the ministers, I give you honor. To faith Christian members and friends, I give you honor. And to my missing rib. <laughs> Would you pray with me for a moment? Well, Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, I come before you with my head bowed humble in my most humblest fashion. I praise you, I glorify you, I lift you up, for you are such a good God. I love you very much, and I just want to thank you for letting me be one of your children. I just want to thank you, dear Lord. I ask you, dear God, this morning, that you would think your thoughts through my mind. Speak your words through my lips. I give you life in my body every day, every hour, every second until I see you face to face. And I pray to God that you will hide me behind the cross, but keep the shadow of it touching me in some way. May the 
meditation of my mind, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight, my Lord and my Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Before I begin my message this morning, I would like to share a few thoughts with you. Something that has been on my mind, this message that I'm going to bring today is not the particular message that I have wanted to bring. One that I had prepared, I had, I had, had labored over for quite some time. I had got my introduction, my body, my conclusion, and closing, and all set, ready to go. But the Holy Spirit said, not this time. I, 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 was, I was awoken, awakened in the middle of the night with two words, uh, divide and conquer. I couldn't really put it any place, but that's a military term. When in battle or some kind of military conflict, if you can divide the enemy, you can divide them up to pieces, you can conquer them. So I got up and I looked around and stuff. And so I put that original message back on the shelf and I started to work on another one. Sometimes sermons have to come with circumstances, situations, timing. And, and, and people in my position, not preaching every Sunday, I have to try to really bring the message that's given to me. I'm a messenger. I am a messenger. I call myself a preacher. I'm a messenger of God. I'm like in the FedEx department. God gave me an envelope and I take it. To one door. I try not to bend it or fold it or crease it or put myself into it. And I try my best to stick as close to the scriptures as I can. I don't like to venture outside the word because that's where you get in trouble. You yeah. yeah. start with you in there. But I try to stay close. I pray that I stay close. But there was a word I'm, 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 I'm going to bring to you this morning. The word that was given to me. FCC. In, in 2014. Be prepared. There's going to be a war. There's a warning. I'm bringing you a warning. As a watchman on the wall, back in Ezekiel, he says, the watchman on the wall must tell the people. And if he doesn't tell the people, things will come down on him. But if he tells the people what God tells him, he's good. Because if he doesn't, if, if I tell you something, it's on you. If I don't, it's on me. So I'm going to get this off of me and on you. That's why I'm looking forward to saying these subjects. And I, I want to bring a lot of encouragement and happiness because I feel the heaviness in this church today. I don't know why, but it's something here. I can think about it, but I don't want to say what it is. But anyway, 2014, faith Christian will come under attack. Are you listening? Yes. You are not to sleep nor slumber. I can hear the sound of the sun cannons firing, I can smell the gun smoke, I can. There is a changing of the guards. Pastor Howard is leaving, and there is a changing of the guards. When leadership changes, there are things below him begun, begin, begin to get uh, confused. But I just want to bring you a message this morning. Vigilance, eternal vigilance is the price of freedom. A familiar saying in our country. We remember Pearl Harbor, what it's like to get caught off guard. The enemy can be deceptive. Japan, Japanese envoys, they were at the peace table. They were sitting at the peace table, negotiating peace. when the attack was launched against Pearl Harbor. Can you imagine? Most of you are too young to know about it, but that's what happened. They were sitting at the table, and they launched an attack, attack against Pearl Harbor. Our country depends on a strong defense, being watchful, and not be, get surprised by another sneak attack, and being powerful, we are prepared to fight when the time is right, when we have to. And the same thing holds true in the spiritual realm. In 
says in Ephesians 6 and 12 that we struggle not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against powers, against the world forces of darkness, against spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. I believe at this moment, at this very moment, that Satan and his demons are holding meetings to try to disrupt, dismantle, and destroy this church. Are you listening? Amen. At this church. To bring it down to his, his mind. This church, I believe, and this people, I keep, I've been coming back and forth in this church for like almost 12 or 13 years. And I keep coming back here. I see people change, but, I, but, I, but it's a good church. Pastor Harwood is not lying when he says it's the best church in the world. Yeah. I've told people outside this church, if I could cut this piece and, and take everyone, every person, not leaving anyone out, the good, the bad, the whatever, everyone, take them to Florida, I probably wouldn't come back as often. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I love this church. I love the people. I just love them. See, God, I believe God has, has cut us into stones. We are stones cut, and we're fitted. Some people come and don't fit. They leave. And some people come and they come back. I say people come back here. They come here, you come back, you come here, you come back. Watch out, you keep coming back, you get stuck. I'm telling you, you slowly get chiseled into this church. You get fitted in. It's a beautiful church. I know Pastor Hall is the pastor of the church, but the people are, the body, and the body is important. Now, you are important, you and you and you are important as the one standing here. I'm performing a function. I'm a, I'm a vessel. I'm a, like a conduit. I'm just like a pipe that God flows to. I pray that I can be where he wants me to be, to say the things he wants me to say. But there are people in this church at this moment that are packing their bags to leave. This very moment. You're looking at other churches. I'm not going to name any names. I'm not going to point any fingers. They're, they're, they're fine sleep. So the, the subject of my sermon is going to be, don't pack your bags too soon. <laughs> don't pack your bags too soon. Because you need it. Warriors are needed. Strong people to help build this church to get to this point are needed. If you take one brick out of a block wall, what does it look like? How does it feel? Every block, every stone in this church is needed. So I ask you, I implore you, the next pastor you come here, give him a chance. Give yourself a chance. Don't cut and run. Hold your spot. Like the kids say, I got my spot. Everybody in this church got a spot where they come from. If you leave too long, you lose your spot. I lost my spot right over there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going too long. You'll find me another spot. A lot of kids say I got my spot. We, we got comfort zone. We church, same way. Same way. Amen? Amen. Comfort zone, we got another spot. <laughs> so, so if you have the Bible, with that said, I'm going to, but I'm not going to ask you to stand, but I'm going to read several passages. And I'm going to kind of read them one after another because they're all tied in together. If you can write them down and go back, but for, for the sake of time, I'm just going to kind of read through them. The first passage I'm going to go through is First Peter 5, 8 through 10. The first one will be 5, 1 Peter, first, chapter 5, verses 8 through 10. And it reads, Be self-controlled and alert. The enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion for someone to devour. Resist them, standing firm in the faith, because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. The God of all grace who calls you into his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you, make you strong, firm, and steadfast. The next scripture I'd like to read for you, John, 10th chapter and the 10th verse. You better just write it down, maybe come back later. It reads, the thief comes only to steal, to kill, 
and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it to its full. I'm reading out of the international version just in case you want to. The next verse will be, next, will be Matthew 12, 43 and 45. The third will be Matthew 12, chapter 43 through 45. And it reads, when an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I'll return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the house unoccupied, swept clean, and put in order. Then it goes and takes with it seven other spirits, more wicked than itself. And they go in and live there. And the final condition of that person is worse than the first. That is how it would be in this wicked generation. And the fourth and last verse I'd like to use, James 4 and 7. Submit yourself then to the Lord God. Resist the devil, and he will flee. You see these scriptures that I read about Satan and his activities. He is the adversary. Every believer, and as such, he is committed to doing all he can to discourage, disarm, and defeat us in our Christian walk. There are five things. There are five strategies that he uses against us. Watch this. He's planning to use these in our lives. I want you to pay attention because he's telling you that you're going to see it. He said he will return to the house he calls his, bo our, his body, our body. He says he will return to the house and he calls our body. See, he lives. He needs a body. He says he will come to steal. He will come to kill. He will come to destroy. And he will come to devour you. As it's, as a saying that says that if the Satan not after you, if the devil not after you, he already has you. Amen. All right. You're standing, right? Are you here? Are you listening? When you are born again, Satan immediately launches a counterattack, violently, violently opposed to what God is doing in your life. He violently attacks you, and he will camp out at your doorstep. He will camp out in your front yard and oppose everything that God brings you, and he'll try to steal everything you can try to steal. Believe me, I'm telling you the truth. He will challenge every step of faith that you take in God. You will openly contest every spiritual growth in every day of your life. It's, it's a fight to the end. When he gets you, you get real comfortable. He's got you. You don't feel that pressure too much Satan after you. He's got you. Because it's going to be it's this constant fight. Believe me. Amen? Amen. Our scripture test tells us the good news, though. There's good news here. Satan can be re resisted. He can be forced to flee. Watch this now. No one can steal your victory in Christ if you don't let them. All right. No one can take your joy in the Lord if you don't let them. No one can take God's peace from you if you don't let them. All right. All right. And no one can hinder your spiritual growth if you don't let them. All right. You gotta let them do it. God, you can do all things. Just remember, the devil is, going not, is not going to give up without a strong effort to get you back. He's all, you also must remember that he has several thousand years of practice. And he's good at it. He's good at what he does. As it says back in Genesis 3 that he is cunning. He is crafty. He is subtle in what he's doing. He's more so than God, more so than any wild animal that God created. Crap. Subtle. You know what that means, right? It's crap. Subtle. You're sneaky. Satan is so slick that he'll get you in the midst of a circumstance and you don't even know how you're dying. You don't know how to get up. He'll get you before you know you've been, been God. <laughs> and one of his strategies is to keep you out of the Word of God. Keep you out of church. Keep you out of the Bible. Keep you out of the world. Keep you out. That's one of his main ones. And he's capable of doing it to the believers 
once, but he, once he begins his, 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 his attack on you, it's hard to know what he's doing, he's doing because you won't know it, you won't feel it. Once you've been introduced to the truth, once you've been introduced to the truth, he starts to worry. Because in 10, 2 Tim, Timothy 3 and 16, it says, All scriptures are God's breathed, breathed, and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. But what really gets Satan's attention, what really gets his attention, is when he sees a believer with his open Bible, with his open heart, and he goes before God and says, God, I want to know. I want to know what you're saying. I want to hear what you're saying. And I believe what you're saying is the truth. Say so know from experience that the word can change people's lives for the better. Very few people can get into the word, don't change somewhere. You will change once you're not. <coughs> you will do anything to keep you from hearing, meditating on the word of God. We get into it, like I said earlier, he will try to steal your joy, steal your word. It says in Mark 4 and 15, when they heard the truth, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that is sown in their heart. God's word is truth. God operates by the truth. Satan, on the other hand, other hand operates by a lie. He's a lie and the father of it. Satan knows all the words that God self tells people to eat. He tried to sneak in and get it all turned around. God's word is the truth in people's mind. The Bible is the truth. And it will set you free. It will set you free from Satan. Gets us in a, in a mindset and he takes us, our mind prisoner. Can you believe your mind gets taken as a prisoner? Mm -hmm. Satan have you believing that you can't do things. Mm -hmm. you have, he'll have you believing that you're not good enough. You have you believing that you're not smart enough. You have you believing this, and it's a lie because the Bible says I, we can do all things in Christ. Amen. 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 John 3 and 32 says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Yes. Are you listening? Amen. Are Amen. You listening? Now, there are three things in the word that Satan hates. I'm trying to give you some stuff that Satan's going to be coming on with. He hates to hear you say it is written. You know the words that Jesus spoke? It is written. Satan can't compete with those words. He's got to get out. He's got to move out. He's got to move. He's got to retreat. Those words spoken in belief and faith in Jesus, Satan has to go. Satan not only uses the strategies of, of two, uh, uh, strategies, he uses tools. Some of the tools he uses worldliness things of the world. In John 2 and 15 it says, do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world and the love of the Father is not in him, anything in the world, the craving, the sinfulness of man, the lust of the eye, the boasting, what you had, what you're doing, the world and desire will pass away but the man who does the will of God last forever. Lust in the flesh. Lust in the eyes. Pride. Life. A part of the world system that appeals to the flesh. We, we try to be friends of the world, but we cannot be a servant of God. We cannot be a friend of the world. When we go worldly friends of all, we got to pass them, pass them by. Satan uses the tools of works. There are people who think that they can work their way to heaven. They think they are justified by the deeds of their work. Works of the flesh. It says in Titus 3 and 5, not by works or righteousness which we, are, we have done, but according to his mercy. He saves us by washing, regeneration, renewing of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 2 and 9. I know I'm saying a lot of scriptures, but some of these are going to stick to you. Stick with you. We'll get back later on. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy. 
Ephesians 2 and 9, look at Ephesians 2, 2 and 9 says, Not by works, lest any man should boast. Not by works, we cannot work you into heaven. We work for the Lord because we are saved, not to get saved. Amen. The Pharisees were a picture of religion without God and Christ. They followed the spirit of the law. They followed the letter of the law. They looked good on the outside, but inside they were wicked and corrupt. Yeah. You can see they were whitewashed tools. Another tool that, tool that Satan uses is weariness. Weariness. We get tired. We get tired, we get careless. We get tired, we don't study like we should. We get tired, we don't read the Bible like we should. In 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, it says, He said unto me, My grace is sufficient for you, for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. When you try to carry the load by yourself, you fall every time. Another tool. This is one of the most important tools I can tell you about. It's distraction. You yeah. so use the tool of distraction. You won't even know. Yeah. You can be studying on a subject in the Bible. A specific study, a specific subject. Before you know it, you'll be way over here. Spending a whole lot of time over there when you be on this subject. Remember Martha and Mary and Jesus went here to Martha's house to eat? Martha was busy in the kitchen cooking. Cooking. She got mad at Mary. She hollered, Mary! Jesus, tell Mary to come back and help me. <laughs> Jesus told her, Mary's doing the right thing. <laughs> we can be busy doing work for the Lord. So busy that we're not doing what we should do. Mm -hmm. Work in this house. Mm -hmm. The devil wants us to become weary and struggle because of the weakness of the flesh. We get tired. It says in Matthew 26 and 41, Jesus told his disciples to watch and pray and do not fall into temptation. I've been trying for these few minutes to give you some information on this war we're about to get But you might ask, how do we identify the enemy? How do we know him? If he's a, if he's a terrorist amongst us, how do we know him when we see him? What does the devil look like? First of all, it's not his appearance that we're looking for. It's his approach. All right. All right. In verse 8, he's described, they describe him as a lion that prowls about. Describe him as a lion that prowls. The ability to prowl implies that he has a freedom of movement. He, does, he doesn't appear as an enemy. He's prowling about. He's just meandering about the crowd. I might be in here right now, wandering around. Yeah. Yeah. The devil is taking the plane back there, up here, over there, all over the church. Yeah. I'm telling you, be weary. That's why you got to get into the Word and know, hear, study. And unfortunately, his red suit, his horns, and his pick sport is not his usual attire. If we know his face and what he's wearing, we can easily identify him. But it says in 2 Corinthians 11 and 14 that Satan masquerades himself as an angel of light. Not surprising then, his servants are masquerading as servants of righteousness. Are you listening? So it's not his appearance that we need to focus on, rather, it's his behavior. Looks can be deceiving. But behavior never lies. You can cover it up. You can change it for a moment. But behavior and character, you can cover it up. You can disguise it, but pretty soon it will come out. you got to be a fruit. You can know them by their fruit. So be a fruit inspector. Come on, preacher. Come on, preacher. All right. All right. Be a fruit inspector. Don't be afraid of to just bet. Yes. When people tell you things, when people tell you things, I'm up here. Don't be afraid to check it out. Amen. Go back to the book. Don't be saying yes and amen to everything you hear. <laughs> <laughs> check it out for yourself. Check out everybody. God gave you the ability. Check it out. 
When you check it off and your spirit tell you it's right, it's right. Just keep checking, check it. Double check it. Let us never forget one important truth. Satan can only work through people. He said, he said, that's why Paul said in Ephesians 6 and 12, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Not against flesh and blood. You start getting into certain things, look at it, pray on it, because sometimes Satan behind the whole scene laughing, smiling. He attacks us through people. Sometimes you and I, even me, husbands and wives, attack each other. You call yourself. You think you are. People attack, attack. It's been said over and over. We can only we shoot too many arrows at people, at friends, at family, at church family, and we hit nothing. We only exaggerate the problem. Real enemy, one who's attacking. Stand back, like I said in the last. People are not the enemy. Satan is the enemy. But what is his purpose? His purpose is to challenge God. And I, way back in Isaiah 14, you'll see that Satan desired to be God. He wanted to rule God's creation. He and one third of his angels rebelled against God and were cast out of heaven. There was a rebellion in heaven called a capital long ago. Hardly before the Bible was written. There was a rebellion. Satan got cast out. Before the Bible was written, there was a war. <laughs> Believe me, Satan has never gotten over his big feet. But he switched gears, and now his purpose is to challenge the work of God in the church where he's successful. If you can't run him out of business, he'll cause havoc. Tell him he will. Churches are in trouble. They're falling all over the place, and they're just dissolving. And I'm telling you, it's the body that's got to, you got to take the state. You got, to, you got that stone that's sitting down. You got your spot. You got your job to do. You can't just break away. I'm telling you. He's so smooth. Satan is so smooth. Things go unnoticed. So just watch. Pray. Watch. Pray. You will hear what I'm saying to you in the next couple of years. You will hear it. You will hear it. You will hear it. My sermon is in vain. But I know it's not. It's going to be too hard. I love it not getting it off me. I love getting it off me. I'm telling you right now. Heavy. I've been heavy all week. I said, I got to tell the church. I got to warn you. I wanted to, I, I was sitting over there and said, well, I wish I had any really uplifting, have dance, make people dance, sermon. I got to do this because it, this is serious. You know, it's, it's one thing about serious, one thing about death and life. We learn more in death than we do in life. <coughs> People laugh and joke, happy and merry. But at funerals and at death, we learn more because after at death a man or a woman, everything is written, everything is done. And we learn. I was going to say well, you might hear one day. What kind of name are you making? Death, birth, which is better? I'm going to work on that one day. I have it done. That's what I want to do. I want to do this. No, I'll do this. I'll do this one. Anyway, I'm, 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 I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. And you can really see and realize that death, the devil realizes that he can't be God, so he goes after the, the soul of his crown. Men and women of this creation. It can't be God. He plans to turn men and women away from God. Remember that story in Job? Uh, he went to God and says, You are Job only uh, worship because you're blessing. Give him to me and I make him curse you. 
think God has given them the encouragement. Mm -hmm. I said earlier that Satan is slick and plan to tempt you, afflict you, and deceive you. He goes after the unsuspecting bunch of us. So don't pack your bags too soon and run away. Don't pack your bags. And always pack your bags. But you won't have to run away and come back from the spot that you missed, like I said. It's always time to run. It's always time to leave. You remember that walk, that story about the Great Wall of China? It's called Big Buck, that Great Wall of China. Big Buck, a lot of labor. When it's finished, it appeared impregnable. The enemy attacked and breached it. Not by breaking it down, not by going around, but bribing the, the gatekeeper. They walked right in. Can you be bribed? Are you, can you be bribed? Satan promises the best, but he pays the worst. <laughs> he yeah. promises pleasure, but he pays in disgrace. Yeah. He promises profit, but he pays with the loss. He promises life, but he pays with death. Yeah. You may be outstanding, you may have an outstanding faith on the outside, but on the inside it comes. Right. So finally, my Bible says, come near to God. He'll come near to you. Right. Yeah. Our people attempt to do things on our own power. We have no impact unless we've got God on our side. We'll fight our battles. And finally, be strong in the Lord and in his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil and his schemes. So when the day of evil comes, you'll be able to stand and keep standing and keep standing and keep standing. Stand. Yeah. We know in our hearts that Jesus died and he laid down his life so that we could stand. On that dreadful day, they took my Lord and they tried him. They found him guilty of a crime that he did not commit. They took him out and they beat him all night long. They beat him all night long, but he didn't say a moment more. Then that dreadful day, they nailed him to the old rugged cross. They hung him high and they stretched him wide. They stood him on one nail. They hung him by two. They pierced his side with the sword until the blood and water ran down. Between the sixth and the ninth hour, he hung his head and the locks and his shoulders, and he died. I said he died. Yeah. He came and he took down that rock, the rock of my salvation. Lord. They took that rock and they put him in a rock. <laughs> Come on, Richard. And they laid him on a rock. Lay it out, lay it out. And they closed him in. With the rock. All right, all right, all right. And there he lay. There he lay. And on the first day, death came looking. Death came looking. Death peeped in. He said, Yes, sir. I'm still there. Death went away to do what death does. All right, all right. All right. And on the second day, come on. death came around looking again. All right, preacher, come on. And he peeped in. Yeah. He's still there. And death went away to do what death does. Yeah. All right. Let's make it plain. But on the third day, All right. I said on the third day, third day. Death came around looking, and he looked in and said, he ain't there. I said, why? Because he's gone. He got up. He got up. Hallelujah. He got up with all power. All power. All power. All power, all power. All power was in his hand. Power to live. Power to save life. Power to give life. With one word, he could change life. He got up. All right. He got up. And as he walked away, he looked back at death, and he said, death. Oh, death, where is your sting? Yeah. Then he looked over at the grave and said, grave, oh grave, 
where is your victim? Yeah. So now my Lord and Savior, he sits at the right hand of the Father. All right. Yes. Interceding for you and me. Protecting you and me. Looking out for you and me. Do you know him? All right. Do Amen. you know him? Amen. <clears throat> Do you know him? If you don't know him, it says in my Bible, that God so loved the world. Yes. That he gave his only begotten son. Yes. Whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Yes. Everlasting life. So if you don't know him, now is the time. The doors of the church are open. Amen. 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 If you don't know our Lord and Savior, if you don't know him and you haven't given your heart to him, now is the time to do it. Later on might be too late. Tomorrow might be too late. You don't want to die unsaved. You don't want to die unsaved. Won't you come? Is there anyone that don't know him? Is there anyone that don't know him? The next call I like to make is to those who don't have a church home. If you're looking for a church home, a Bible preaching, Bible teaching church with lovable people, this is the place to be. Won't you come? Won't you come? Third call I like to make is to those that have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And somehow they slipped and failed. But he's calling you back. Because we fall down, but we get up. Won't you come back? Won't you come back? Well, you've heard my message. That's my message.
Father, we bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 